Throughout human history, gold has always represented some kind of heavenly power. Halos of gold leaf were used to show that an individual was holy and powerful. Imagine if I were applying gold eyeshadow while I was talking about that, that would have been everything. Nope, we're sticking to green though. But it's All right, hi fairies, welcome back to another internet archaeology. If you don't know what that is, if this is your first time, this is basically, basically kind of a chit chat, get ready with me style video, except we're gonna be talking about certain things and topics that are important in modern day culture, internet archaeology, if you will. So the topic of this video is eat the rich. Mm. But not only that, but also just billionaires, money, certain philosophical aspects of money, and also what exactly is this whole eat the rich movement? And why do a lot of people seem to almost have this instinctual distrust or pessimism in regard to powerful individuals and money? It really comes down to whether or not we believe money to have a corrupting nature, or we believe people just to be far too corrupt to handle concepts such as money. And speaking of a distrust of powerful and wealthy people, let me tell you how you can protect yourself from them online. This video was very generously sponsored by Surfshark VPN. This is my first sponsor video, so ooh, I'm very excited. Surfshark is a browsing extension and software that gives you complete control over your internet connection. You can change your geographical locations to bypass regional filters. So for example, you can access Canadian YouTube. Oh, there's a little CA right next to the logo, or have access to a completely different content library on Netflix. For example, The Wolf of Wall Street isn't actually available on Netflix here in the US. You can bypass this filter by changing your geographic location using Surfshark. Mm, very good. And speaking of Netflix, Surfshark also allows you to have multiple devices registered on one account. You just need one account, so it's kind of like Netflix in that way. Surfshark also encrypts your data as you use it, so your internet connection will always be secure and private. Even when using public Wi-Fi networks, for example, the Starbucks Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi at Barnes & Noble, those places that make it seem like free Wi-Fi is a little bit too good to be true. Because those networks can actually be a goldmine for hackers and individuals trying to steal your personal data. You can use my discount code McAvoy for 83% off as well as your first three months free. They also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it. All of the information will be linked in the description, but thank you so much again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. All right, but let's get into the video. Move these hair tendrils out of the way. So Firstly, I kind of want to share this thing I've kind of been thinking about or this view I kind of have of money. I actually said this on a podcast, I think it was almost like maybe six or seven months ago. I basically said that if you think about it, money is modern day magic. It's the closest thing we have to human semi-divinity. With modern science and the miracles of modern technology or whatever you want to say, things are possible now that if you were to go back a hundred years and tell people, they wouldn't believe you. We have the technology to put a man on the moon. You're watching me. You're seeing a moving image that's a product of a person thousands of miles away on a glass tablet. It's almost like modern day magic, except the thing is this magic has a price. And I'm sure that's not surprising to a lot of people. Putting someone on the moon is expensive and the latest greatest technology like the, the iPhone XXL or whatever, it's a thousand dollars, it's quite expensive. But what I mean by money being like modern day magic is that one of the properties of money is that you can actually exchange it for almost everything. You can conjure whatever it is your heart desires as long as you're willing to pay for it. You know, if you've ever played like an RPG game before, you know that spell casting in games, every spell has a mana cost. And real life can actually be quite similar to that in a way, because instead of mana, you have money. And I know what you're thinking, why does this random object have so much power over pretty much everyone? For a lot of people, it is very easy to question the power of money. A fly just went over the lens, I hope that didn't bother anyone. For a lot of people, it's very easy to question the power of money, because if you were to say, it's just paper, you wouldn't be completely wrong. It's technically cotton, but objectively, yes, it is paper, but the thing is, money, when I say money, I don't just mean the bills it's printed on. Money is a highly symbolic object, whether it be a dollar, a florin for the Witcher fans out there. The sordid topic of coin is not so simple. That's a quote from Death Becomes Her. Egg. Even though it is very easy to question the value of money, you do have to understand it in a symbolic way if you truly want to understand the power it has over pretty much the world. There was a TED talk a while ago, I forgot who did it, I'll put it on the screen if I can find it. That TED talk basically introduced a theory through a hypothetical situation. Imagine there's a deserted island where there's nothing but plants and trees or whatever. Now imagine if you were to take a person, a human from the middle of Los Angeles, and if you were to take that person as well as a chimpanzee, humanity's closest evolutionary ancestor, and put them on the island together. Who do you think would have a better chance of survival? The human? or the chimpanzee. And for the sake of simplicity, let's just go with the obvious and say that the chimpanzee probably has a better chance of survival on its own. Because chimpanzees are animals.
animals. They're very good at climbing, it can find its own food. Oh, monkey. Whereas a modern human isn't typically as adept as a wild animal is to, at finding food on a deserted island. And I know that might be a weird fact to acknowledge, the fact that our evolutionary precursor, something that we evolved from, we're almost like the latest, the latest update. So why is it that on our own, our logic basically tells us that we're fucked? Where is the evolutionary strength of humanity? And I'll give you a hint, it's not just these guys. Chimps have those too, they use them for different purposes, like picking their nose or something. Let's alter that deserted island hypothetical for one second. So what if instead of one human and one chimpanzee, we do a hundred or a thousand of each on this deserted island? A thousand chimpanzees on one island? They'd be poop, flinging poop everywhere, it'd be chaos. But a thousand humans on that island, you'd basically have Fire Island. But if you were to put a thousand humans on that island, you wouldn't get chaos. You would most likely get society. One of the greatest strengths of humanity is our ability to create these extremely complex social systems. For example, a company, a corporation, let's say YouTube or Google. These mega companies employ thousands, if not tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of individuals who likely don't see every single person that enables their job position to exist. Shit gets really complicated really quick. For example, example, you don't know the person that manufactured your phone. You may not even know the person that's directly responsible for the innovations that make your phone possible. But nonetheless, our interaction and whatever you use your phone for is a direct consequence of their very actions. Modern society is held up by people who act in the best interest of the collective. Not only that, but also the expectation that you will do the same. For eyeshadow, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a green thing today. I do have this little old ver-, ver Lord Voldemort kind of shawl thing. I want to serve a little little gay Dementor fantasy. Period, the so I'm gonna be trying out the Odin's Eye Erd palette. It's this really pretty little Slytherin moment. Another thing I often think about when I'm thinking about this topic is the symbolic and artistic significance of gold, like gold the material. Throughout human history, gold has always represented some kind of heavenly power. English royalty, people who were thought to have like God-given right to power, royalty. These people wore crowns made of gold. In certain medieval Bibles, the illuminated manuscripts, halos of gold leaf were used to show that an individual was holy and powerful. And in the East, there's the golden Bodhisattva statues. And I could go on and on and on. Don't even get me started about how much the Aztecs love gold. But gold has always been synonymous with the divine, representative of this divine, almost godlike power, celestial power. And in our modern day, what does gold represent? money. So given that, would it actually be that much of an overstatement to say that in the modern world, money is God? Imagine if I were applying gold eyeshadow while I was talking about that, that would have been everything. Nope, we're sticking to green though. But it's also important to note that money, unlike a divine figure or some kind of deity, it's not really personified. That being said, let's say that money isn't actually a divine entity. Let's say it's just a factor of the modern world, a factor which controls it. And as I stated before, order and cooperation are necessary. Citing the example with the chimpanzee, on the deserted island, we need order to function. So if people can control money, and money directly and indirectly controls the world, then theoretically he or she who controls the money controls the world. What's that thing they say in Dune? He who controls the spice controls the galaxy? Something like that. And I don't know if you've noticed, but throughout this video, I keep bringing up the aspect of religion and the divine. I've been trying to establish some form of link, whether it be metaphorical, symbolic, or literal, because if you've ever taken a course or looked into religious anthropology, sociology, or philosophy, things other than theology, control is a major part of religion. Keeping that in mind, it's interesting to think that gold has symbolism both within wealth and religion, and both wealth and religion have aspects of control. She's got a point. Ooh, look at that green shimmer. So let's talk about Eat the Rich. And I'm sure in the thumbnail of this video, I'm probably gonna do something like, this is fake money and this is real money. What I mean by that is there's this certain kind of aspect of flex culture, if you will. I can talk about flex culture in a different video. I don't wanna get too much into it right now. While their clothing, vehicles, and decor may be extremely tacky, it's important to acknowledge that this doesn't necessarily mean that they're responsible for a socioeconomic problem. It's literally just bad taste. These people are not the ones being targeted by Eat the Rich. And I'm trying to say this in like, the nicest, not meanest way possible. But if you think Logan Paul or Little Tay or Bad Baby, these individuals who are notorious for flexing are part of the top corrupt 1%. Baby, have I got some news for you. Having enough money to buy a European sports car or own property, just being a successful individual does not mean we should nom 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 eat the rich. 
Mm. But there's this thing I always think about, and that is the world of the hidden billionaires, the money that is so corrupt that it hides itself from you. But I want to challenge you to something. Just, just do something for me if you're willing to entertain this. Pick a random multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical company. Oh, Lord. Because nothing is more corrupt than the Western pharmaceutical industry. Try and find the CEO of that company. If you were able to find something, any kind of social media this person has, or is it as if they don't even exist? Most of the times, it's the latter. When people think of billionaires, a lot of the times they think of, you know, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Lizzo's number one fan, those people who are kind of a little bit more public figures in a way. So there is some kind of PR or image aspect to their existence online because they choose to be very public with things. But imagine an individual that is just as powerful, just as wealthy and influential. However, they do everything in their power to remain hidden as if they don't even exist. That's exactly why I wanted you to do that little experiment, a company that inflates the price of life-saving medication, so much so where it's out of reach for so many people. The person responsible for that, the person calling the shots, that's why they want to remain hidden, because they know it's wrong. That, in a way, is kind of the truest meaning, or at least my personal definition, of the phrase, eat the rich. So when a lot of people hear the phrase, eat the rich, they think about people with expensive sports cars, lavish lifestyles, like Kim Kardashian, very public figures. But the thing is, the people that you should be eating, you know, nom nom nom, mm. are actually the ones that are trying to do everything in their power to remain hidden. Forgive my blatantly obvious referencing, but it's kind of like Star Wars in a way, like uh, Darth Sidious, Chancellor Palpatine, whatever you want to call him. He wanted to rule from the shadows. He never wanted his face to be plastered around on billboards and let people know who to target. He ruled and executed his power through multiple different proxies. His throne was not dripping in gold and diamonds. In fact, quite the opposite. It was sitting in complete darkness. And that is why he was such a difficult enemy to defeat, almost hidden in plain sight. How can you hold someone accountable if you don't even know who they are, or let alone even if they exist? They're already coming for me. <laughs> Alright, I'm back. So I just finished eyes and lashes off camera because I could not focus and do the- but I feel like it's important to close this video on the note that as irritating as flex culture can be at times, it is actually a celebration of rags to riches stories and an individual's entry into the nouveau riche. And these individuals don't really deserve to be eaten, nom 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 in my opinion, because having bad taste does not necessarily mean that you're working to ensure the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor, which is something that I believe we have all seen in recent times happen. Flexing in a way can actually be a celebration of when the cyclical nature of wealth is broken. Seeing Jake Paul literally eat cereal out of thousand dollar shoes, while that can be irritating, the thing is I feel like that irritation is a completely different discussion than what people mean when they say eat the rich. Because wasting money is completely different than hoarding it or withholding access to it. Like I said earlier when I made the comparison, money and all that stuff is all about control. When people put out the message that they live in such excess and opulence, that they have all this money, that they're capable of buying an $800 Supreme t-shirt, the thing is that doesn't say you have $800 to spend on a t-shirt. That says you had $800 to spend on a t-shirt. You know, it's the ultimate epitome of people who drive an extremely expensive European sports car, but they live in a very rundown apartment. Because after all, when someone spends a lot of money on something, that doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna have anything left. The aspect of control that conveys is control over oneself. What I mean by that, and once again, I'm trying to say this in a nice way, to flex and draw attention to themselves, which attention is not always always a good thing. Don't act surprised if your prized possessions get stolen after you flaunt it and make sure everyone knows exactly what you have. But when someone goes out of their way to make sure everyone knows exactly what they have and how wealthy they are, they're clearly trying to prove something. They want to project an image. They want to control the way they are perceived by other people. That's completely different to someone not wanting you to know they exist at all. The people that rule from their throne in the shadows. Because the thing they desire is not control over the way they are perceived by others and they want to seem like such a rich, fun, and eccentric person living it up their best life. What they seek is outward control. Control of these companies, these social entities, business conglomerates that people depend on because after all, whoever controls the spice controls the universe. And I think the fragrance I'm gonna be wearing tonight during my adventurous time indoors, because what's the point of looking good if you don't smell that good? I think I'm going to wear Nest Midnight Fleur. It's definitely a very almost green and exotic smelling vanilla. It has like a little bit of patchouli and some nice 
nice amber in there. It also kind of smells a little bit like figs to me. It's actually quite unisex though, in my opinion. This is one of my favorites. It definitely smells a little bit like a sexy librarian. This is definitely a fragrance that makes people immediately want to have sex with you. And not because you smell typical, but because you smell like you're simply better than them. I have a huge perfume collection and I am very particular about the way I smell. I wouldn't be caught dead in Britney Spears, Juicy Couture. Oof, just the thought of it. I need to get more of this on right now. All right, but I think that's about it for this video. This is the finished look. Definitely a cute little emerald tone on the eyes. Very cute. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it intellectually stimulating and nutritious. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to and leave a comment for the algorithm because it really does help. Once again, thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. I'm leaving all of the information you need to find them in the description. But yes, I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mmm.